you know, clients will come to us, single mothers will come to us, and I hear like my mom's voice in them. And, you know, their job or their whole goal is just to be able to get a couple of cards and get their kids into a, a condo or a townhome or some type of home that's theirs. Welcome to Maxed Out Man, helping you become the man you were made to be. Hey guys, it's Kevin Davis from the Maxed Out Man podcast. I am going to be here with a friend of mine, Kai Clancy. Super excited to talk to this young guy. Um, before I get started, um, I want to remind you, go to maxedoutman.com. Check out all the offerings we have there in terms of courses and coaching and all sorts of things. I keep mentioning this. We're trying to kind of plan a trip to Costa Rica to do a men's event. Um, and I've said this on the podcast the last several episodes. I don't really have a, a definitive plan for it yet. Trying to see whether anybody would be interested in doing this. Could be later this fall in 2024, maybe in spring 2025. But if you want to, shoot me an email, KD at Maxed Out Man. Let me know you're interested and we'll go from there. So, hey, let me give Kai's quick intro. Kai is a 25 year old entrepreneur from Miami with credit repair business since 2019. Growing up in Arizona, he aims to help people improve their credit and educate them to maintain financial health. Dude, I wish that I was where you were uh, at 25, honestly. Um, in terms of knowing more about this credit stuff, but, um, I'm super excited for you to be here. Let me give the backstory and then I'll have you give your backstory. But Kai and I met Perfect. probably two months ago at an event called redeemed, which was a, uh, a men's event and, uh, life changing for me. And I'll let Kai tell the story, but it seems life changing for him as well. Absolutely. Um, and, um, it, it's just been a real joy. We haven't spent a ton of time together, but I tell you what we have has been just phenomenal. Um, these kind of events, if you've never been to one, um, it basically condenses like 10 years worth of relationship building in like three days. And, and, you know, and, and that's no exaggeration. I think it's like, you Truth. come away from this with new relationships and like really loving these guys and really wanting to connect. And so I'm super excited to, to call Kai a friend and, and thanks man for coming on board. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I really do. And, si and sign me up for your trip as well, because that sounds like a blast. So you have awesome. one, one spot filled already, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> one spot, nice. so, so there we go on that end. But, um, yeah, I mean, Credit repair is one of those things where, I mean, I learned really early on, you get paid based off of, you know, the problems you solve. Um, yep. And so coming out of high school, went to college for a semester, went to a JUCO, uh, wasn't anything special, right? I mean, I, I could all, I could genuinely say I've always had that uh, ambition to want to be a businessman when people would ask me what I'm going to go to school for. It was always Entrepreneur, entrepreneurial business. spirit, right? Entrepreneurial exactly. spirit. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And um, I mean, what international business, like what's, what's international business? Right? <laughs> you, you have no idea. And so one first semester, uh, I met a really, you know, great guy. His name's Louis Wilkins, who's still, you know, a great friend of mine. And uh, he's in the real estate space, um, the luxury real estate space in Phoenix. And I asked him, I said, Louis, like, it's almost out of the Wolf of Wall Street. But I asked him, like, Bro, I know you're making money. Like, why, why are you going to, to Juco? Because I was asking myself the same question, but I wasn't <laughs> making money. And so there was no reason for me to hop out. And uh, he told me, he was like, yeah, I made, you know, X amount of my first deal. And respectfully, my mom said, like, I want you to get your associates, which, you know, good job. Good on him, man. Like, uh, giving her that respect and, and going back because he was definitely making good cash. Uh, but I just didn't have that four years or two and a half years to be able to kind of sit back and hope it was going to work out. So um, went through a, a little bit of like a transition, trying to figure out what I was going to do and where I was going to go. And I found myself on Craigslist one day, uh, dialing this entry level jobs, because I knew if I could get my foot in the door somewhere, uh, it was, you know, that was the story. It was going to, there was no chance I was going to let off the gas and not be successful there. And so third call in a guy named Anthony Boca picked up Anthony, uh, had a, a great personality over the phone. And he told me, respectfully, Kai, if I was to send you to the job that you called in for, you're going to quit in three days and you're never going to call me again. But I think that you sound really good on the phone. And I think you should come and interview for our actual company. Um, and at the time, it was corporate recruiting. So I had no, I had no idea what that was, what a headhunter was, um, you know, how competitive of like a market it was, 
or even and you're a, a and you're sales. like 20 you're like 20 right at this point 18 years i'm 18 years old <laughs> at this time and so i show up uh to this interview on a let's just say a wednesday if i'm not mistaken um one of the guys who's one of my best friends now is in Koa bordo he has a great marketing company who we do a lot of business with um and at the time he was my manager at corporate job bank so at corporate job bank beat out let's just say eight guys is what he told me i really don't believe those eight guys but i think that he was just kind of telling me that to put a chip on my shoulder and i also told them i'll work for free you know like Mm. they weren't gonna pay me uh, or not pay me but you know they got me indefinitely cheaper than everyone else is asking to get paid so um started at like 11 50 an hour and was getting paid based off of every single person that I would onboard to work at this horrible job that I was going to go work at. Ironically. <laughs> so Kikoa asked me like, Hey, why should I hire you? And I told him the same thing I just told you like, Hey, I don't know what you guys do, but if you guys give me direction, there's no one that's going to work harder than me. And I'm going to run through walls for you guys. Um, just give me an opportunity. And I, he saw something in my eye that I didn't see in myself at the time. And he gave me that opportunity, thankfully. And we stayed there, did the records and, you know, moved up, went to another uh, larger corporate recruiting company. At that time, I was getting, you know, other people cool jobs. And I I saw in my eye, like, okay, the guys that were really, because I was in sales, but I wasn't in sales, right? The real sales Mm, and corporate recruiting is being able to bring new accounts on and being able to build those relationships. And so I was just a sourcer. I was just like the bottom guy bringing in the, the people for the interviews so they could talk to the actual recruiters. Then I worked up to the junior recruiter. And during that time, I was working with people that worked at Boeing and um, some defense contracting positions. So they had really cool jobs and great stories. I'm 19 years old and I'm just looking at myself like, really what I want to do? You know, is this where I want to be right now for the rest of my life? And those people at that company that had worked there for 25 to 30 years, and I saw how quickly I could go down that same rabbit hole. Um, and ironically, on Instagram, was scrolling one day, and I saw this kid named Alex Sands. He was standing on his Bentley Bentayga uh, in downtown Phoenix. And you know, I I don't come from uh, like a silver spoon, right? We always I came home, would always have food on the table, had a house over my head, but we weren't by any means, you know, we were like middle class. We'll just say that. Yeah. And I'm thankful yeah. for. Um, how I was raised, because if I ever wanted anything, I worked for it, right? Uh, my parents gave me great opportunities, and I'm thankful for being able to play like sports and stuff. But, you know, they did their job. And my mom, she worked really hard. Uh, when I was in seventh grade, she be- kind of became like a single parent household. And so um, things kind of switched up. And I had to grow up, you know, at a, a different age to be able to say, like, if I want something, it's, it's kind of kind of up to us. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, definitely went off on a, a tangent right there a little bit. Where were we at? I'm sorry about that. No, I want to, I want to explore that more, but you, you were talking about your corporate. So you were looking at all these guys that had, with yeah, Boeing I apologize. And some of these I cool apologize. Jobs. Thank you no, for you, bringing no, me back. I, to I, it. I, I, I want, I, I definitely want to go into that if you want to go into okay. that. Cause I think no, it's I a do, great part of the story. So where we grew up, right. So the reason I was bringing up like, you know, the, the family dynamic and where we were, because I grew up in a, a, an interesting area in Phoenix, Arizona, where over time it's definitely like property values have gone up because of like it being the historic, the historic district, um, and so it's kind of been gentrified. But growing up, it was a lot different than what it is today, right? And so it, it was a a movie to say the least. But I'm thankful for that, right? Because it definitely like I was the the white kid that was next to you know it didn't matter if you were brown, purple, black. <laughs> Then who, whoever you were, orange, like wherever you were in life, we were friends, right? Because we still mm-hmm. rode the city bus to school together. You know, we, we, we had each other's back. We all grew up in the same area, right? Uh, but I was looking on Instagram and I'm like, okay, that kid is in my neighborhood. No one has a Bentley Bentayga and he looks young. What is he doing? Right. And so I started following him and I was at dinner one night and I saw on his story, he posted a guy named Tino who, would later become, you know, one of my mentors at Tommy Sales and post about, hey, if you want a job in sales to be able to learn, you know, and work directly with me, um, send a video of why you should work with me. And I was at dinner at the time with my ex-girlfriend and her family. And I was texting them like, hey, 
I really want this job, but I can't send the video right now. He's like, do you want the effing job? So I went outside of Olive Garden and I shot this video <laughs> saying the same thing again. I don't know what you guys do, but if you gave me the opportunity to be able to even work with you, there's no one that's going to outwork me. Um, went in and, you know, there was no, it was like a, a real sales job. It was a startup company. So they didn't have insurance. They didn't have all the safety nets that the corporate field gave me. I had a base, but it wasn't a huge base. And I was taking three steps back, but I just knew in my heart I was going to go four steps forward. And mm -hmm. I remember telling my dad, like, I'm going to leave this job that I'm making you know, 75K a year at, and I'm going to go and make 2,500 bucks base a month. And I don't even know my commission structure, but I know that I'm going to be successful there. I know it's going to be able to open up some doors. And so between you know that day that I left and started working with Tino, and in the first six months, we were able to put up $1.2 million in collected cash, selling, you know, events, selling mentorships, selling education. And it opened my eyes to, one, being able to have true leaders in front of you um, that I'm not going to war with anyone that hasn't been themselves ever, right? Mm -hmm. And that guy, he would never ask me to do something that he didn't do himself. And so owning a business and being an entrepreneur is being able to take what you like from the companies you worked for, what you didn't like, and being able to create your own, right? And I took a lot of things that I liked from what he was able to do with the culture building, um, the relationship building, and was able to find my passion, which is credit repair, find that problem that we're solving. And that's what Flawless Consulting has been for the past five years. That's, I mean, that story is awesome. What is it that, and I do want to get into so many of those things, but what, what is it that you had that innate? Cause I, you and I, um, actually probably have a similar little bit, little bit of a similar background, um, in, in a different way. But, and I think all entrepreneurs that I've met have a like, Hey, I didn't come from money. I pushed, you know, I pushed really hard. Right. I had this, this family situation, which drove me. What gave you that confidence? I mean, obviously the work ethic is always there, right? But, yeah. but the confidence, I think, is what you see in people that are good at sales also because it's that relationship building aspect of it that you have to have a confidence that what I have is going to solve the problem for someone else, right. which is really that's what sales is, right? And and like, but what gave you, how did you get to that confidence level? So there's like two, there's two sides to sales. And my, my grandmother taught me uh, this first trick when I was in seventh grade, or this first rule of sales is you're finding a problem, right? Mm -hmm. um, all sales is, is you have a solution with your sale, and you're finding that problem, right? But taking it a step further, nobody wants to be sold. Everybody wants to go shopping with their friends, right? When I was in school, I would always like, I was a talker, teacher, I would interrupt. I was always the, the, the one that was just like the class clown, <laughs> the guy that was chirping, that was who I was. Um, and you know, they're always like, get Kyle on ADHD medicine, you know, get him to be quiet. First off, it was just probably parenting. I was like the, the baby of four. So my mom was just probably tired. Right? I'm not saying that she <laughs> let me re run rampant, but a couple backhands would have probably solved that problem, being transparent. But what made me different is what made me successful later on in life, right? Um, being able to build a relationship with everyone. It did not matter if, if you put me in the hallway, I was making friends with the person that was also in the hallway or just walking through and I was dragging them into the situation in a way, right? Not good, but it's just a characteristic that it's either for you or against you. And I made it for me, right? Um, being a leader though, and being a sales guy is a little bit different than that because, you know, you're trying to, with a sale, you're finding that problem to be able to, you know, solve it. But being able to teach someone to, sell that problem and convey that you have that solution for that, you know, client or whoever it may be is a little bit different of a, of a, uh, of like a skill, I guess you could mm -hmm. say. And so being great at sales is something that, you know, you can be born with quote unquote. It's definitely a, 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 a tool that you can have. That's my skunk running back in the background. <laughs> my guy, all yeah, I apologize. You're um, good. I love, we, we're very dog friendly around here. So yeah, that's the guy, but yeah, so you can, you can have those skills, but it's also, you know, something that, um, you have to be able to look in the mirror and it's, there's like an extrovert and introvert and the people that are great at being able to be engineers and lock in and being able to be the media guys and be on a computer for five to six hours straight, because that's what they do. They don't want to talk to anyone. That's their skill. So my skill is being able to 
build a relationship with anyone um, mm-hmm. and, you know, truly care, right? Like it's one thing because people can see past that. Um, I think that's one thing that is coming out over the last you know couple of years is being authentic. Like there's full Instagrams of people that all they do in life is fact check other entrepreneurs, <laughs> fact check others. And, you know, if you're not being authentic, it might not come out today, but you know, it will in 10 to 15 years. And I'm, I'm sure there's going to be a point where someone's coming back and listening to this podcast for me. And so <laughs> Hope you're taking notes. No, yeah, I mean, like, but, I mean, because now if you're watching that guy on Instagram standing on the Bentley, that's rented. Uh, first yeah. of all, even though absolutely are really well made, I don't recommend standing on them. Uh, side <laughs> side story to that: there was a my wife did these off road events, um, and they basically took them through the desert and all that. So Rolls Royce actually did a promo, and two of the journalists stood on the hood of this Rolls Royce in the Uh-oh. sand. It was twenty eight thousand dollars worth of damage to that. Oh hood. no! <laughs> so anyway, I don't recommend you stand on hoods. But to your point, now if you're saying that you know you can rent hangers, you can rent you know G five, you know, all that stuff, and so all of that is like this. You like I'd rather hear your story, right? Like I'd rather right. hear like, dude, I grew up in in Phoenix, and then I worked my ass off, and then I did this, right. and that's that's where I got to. Cause that's the authenticity. Gary V's built his whole brand around. I mean, he just uses the F word a lot. <laughs> right. you know, not, I don't talk like that, but that's his, that's his authentic self. And he's, he's worked really right. well. It's worked. And really loving well a team that. that's not that good respectfully. So yeah, it's okay. He's, he's pretty authentic. You know, you're a huge With, Jets fan. That's the, how you know you're Jets. authentic. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. But uh, side note too, I actually, my first, so I, my degree is in exercise physiology. I have another one in business, but I ran health clubs in Phoenix. I got my oh, first wow. club was, was the camel back and it was called cue the sports club. You were probably like three at the time. If you were even born. <laughs> actually, you weren't born because we got pregnant with my first child when we were in Phoenix. So before you were born, and then I had another club in Scottsdale. So like I actually lived in Phoenix for three and a half years, but, um, but that I was during I, the time where you wouldn't want to go in my neighborhood being transparent <laughs> down. Yeah. Downtown is just, you probably stayed away from that part of town for sure. Yeah. You had Camelback road, right? Like you had that yes. little microcosm of the business people and they kind of hung out and did in their the thing. Biltmore area, yeah. Yeah. Built more and all that, but not, yeah. We, the Phoenix is, it was a rough time back then, you know, and it was, it was interesting. Know, so. Um, I, I mean, 2008 and I know it. Okay. We're talking a 10 year difference, but I remember, you know, around 2008, 2009, like, uh, Phoenix was hit, you know, pretty difficult. I it was a horrible recession and hit our family as it hit everyone's out there. Um, but it really did hit like our economy. Mm-hmm. Downtown Phoenix was dead. You know, I remember for five to 10 years, it was, you didn't go down. If there wasn't a baseball game or a son's game, you weren't going downtown for anything. Right. And oh, so wow. it's been really cool to be able to see um it grow and the nightlife grow and be able to see you know people come into phoenix from out of town and um add to the economy it's been good it's been really good that's awesome yeah i mean it's um having you come from that did you have a desire so you know i have i have a thing behind me that says success redefined right so over my right. life when i was about your age i almost completely blew it with my family um we had just had our first child and like I was really good at my job but I sucked it I didn't know what to do as a dad and so I leaned right. into that which is a huge mistake um but over time I learned to redefine success right like you know we, hanging out with I, I have the pleasure of talking to and being friends with people just like you that make a heck of a lot more money than me right right but that doesn't always mean that they're the type of people I want to emulate Right. Were you driven by the, you know, as a kid that kind of grew up in that area, were you driven by the financial success or just the overall lifestyle? Like what, what drove, what drove you? Um, yeah. So I way? remember it, my brother and sorry for, but that's such a great, great question. And just off top, like it's because that question has came up over and over again. Like my brother used to ask me like, when's enough enough. Right. Um, and you know, there's simple pleasures of just going to dinner, right? Because mm-hmm. when I grew up, 
There was never a time that I would leave the household, get off the phone with any of my brothers, with my father or my mother, and didn't say I love you, right? Or didn't Mm -hmm. hear I love you. So I know what love is. I'm thankful for that. Um, The financial stress, I mean, remember, remembering I was probably seven years old, eight years old, eight to nine years old when 2008 happened, right? But I could remember those feelings and the stress and the conversation that they had about, hey, we just, you know, lost our job. And if any of you break your arm on the trampoline, we're screwed. So no one's going on the trampoline for a couple of months until mom has a job. Okay. Yeah. And I remember those feelings and I remember that anxiety and that angst. And so growing up, I know that, you know, going to be able to take just like being a business owner is taking what you like and what you didn't like from those. It's, that's what being a parent is as well. It's taking what you like from your parents, taking what you didn't like, and then becoming your own parent, right? Or trying mm-hmm. to. Um, and so for me personally, knowing what love is, how do I kind of make like a not a perfect life? Because there's never going to be a perfect life. Just like we were talking about yesterday, how it's a heartbeat. And if it's flat, then you're dead. But to be able to have a happy life, it's work really freaking hard and have some cash and be mm-hmm. able to, you know, have a safety net. And when you're going out to eat, no one get weird and looking and ordering at the, like, due to the price and not what they're feeling or wanting to eat to make themselves feel good, right? Um, and so just being able to hold the card up at dinner and not, like, looking at the check, not worrying yeah. about that. Tell them, like, hey, yeah. grab another drink if you want to. Um, those are like little keys to success and what is success? That's just freedom. So being able to be free, you know, there was a a time where I like for six months, I wasn't working that hard with flawless because I was free, right? I could clock in when I wanted to, but you know, to be able to have like true success and true freedom, um, that's a privilege, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of sacrificing like what you want right now for what you're going to have later. And that's even working out. That's like what Justin tells us all the time, right? Mm -hmm. You're not going to see the results today. You're definitely not going to see the results today. It's going to take 90 to 120 days. And that's just life in general. You know, as long as you're consistent with it um, and you do the whole David 1% better every single day, you're going to see some good success. And so with that, um, success doesn't chase money. Money chases success. If you're successful in all areas and everything that you do, it's going to stack up. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've used the phrase, if you're chasing money as your primary goal, there'll never be enough, like to Mm -hmm. your, to your brother's point. And he may have misunderstood what your goals were, but if that's your main objective and, and I I mean, I was 19 and I was chasing the six figure a year. Like I was like, I'm going to make a hundred grand in a year, you know? And yeah, the minute that switched, um, and you know, we kind of put our backs up against the wall. I have it tattooed a Dantes Fortuna Eva, which is Latin for fortune favors the bold. And I got it before FTX trademarked it. So I don't want to hear anything from anyone. (laughs) But uh, it's the truth though, right? Like the people that are, you know, risky with calculated risks are the people that normally come out on top. And so coming from nothing, no safety net, no one's going to, no one's picking up my rent. No one's picking up my car bill if, you know, something goes wrong, right? Um, And to take it a step further, now I have employees that they have children, right? Mm -hmm. They have their own lives. Like, one of my guys, he has $2,700 in uh, child support a month, you know, and like, geez, man, kids are expensive. So <laughs> yeah. I see, I don't, uh, whoa, buddy, relax. So these are my stresses now, uh, but I put myself in that position to be able to gain that freedom that is coming, you know, later on. So yeah, thankful for and sure. I, I, I like that because I've heard that about dinner too. What's funny is that I'm 51 and I still can't go to dinner. We went to some steakhouse that was freaking ridiculous at right. the, like, I mean, it's like $400 for a filet. And yeah. so I grew, I grew up like I'm literal trailer trash. Like I grew up in a trailer park, single mom, all of that stuff. Right. So I still have not been able to switch that part of my brain off because I'm like, that's freaking ridiculous. I'm not paying. Right. I don't care who's picking up the check, but to have that freedom to allow other people to do it. Or, you know, we've had situations where, um, you know, the tip the bill, right? Like you see right. the, see a need in a server and you're like, Hey, here's a hundred bucks, you know, here's a tip for a hundred dollars and right. You know, hope those blesses you and all that. So that, that's yeah. a really good way to look at freedom, especially at, you know, at 25. And, um, that's, that's really cool. Appreciate you. Really do. 
Yeah. So tell me about, we talked yesterday before, you know, we were, we were talking about honestly, like my personal business debt situation and some of the things that we've worked through with that. And some of the things I'm still dealing with from, you know, we all make stupid decisions, right? Um, you have a great profile, by the way. If anyone's oh. wondering, he has a great he has a great credit <laughs> profile. That, that's the thing. It's just education when it comes to yeah. it. Like you look at a three digit score, and you're stressed. But you know, my job uh, being into credit is looking at it from an underwriting standpoint, right? So what's yeah. in? What are the chances that Kai is going to pay this loan back if I give him X amount of dollars, right? Yeah. And yeah. you are in a phenomenal position. Um, I, in my, I just just got to put it out there. And, I appreciate I, mean, I, I yeah. appreciate that. Well, we talked about, and I want to get into it more, uh, not necessarily my personal situation, which we can talk about <laughs> right. that. That that I mean, we can talk about it. I don't really care. Um, <laughs> but what what <laughs> I use this line, and I probably use it on this podcast before. I, it's because it's one of my like cliches, right? I see so many things in the same way that I see transmissions, like automatic transmissions. I'm a big car guy, build hot rods. I will build anything on a vehicle with no hesitation, including electrical, but I don't touch automatic transmissions, which probably means I need to build one. But I'm convinced that automatic transmissions are are run off of fairy farts and unicorn tears. Like there's okay, some respect. magic yeah. dust. And what <laughs> I said to you yesterday is that I feel like that credit is that same way. And I also equated it to kind of our healthcare system, which the, you know, the powers that be, right? The the credit union or the, the credit bureaus, the lenders, all of these kind of use that against the average consumer because we simply right. don't know, right? Like right. I've got an 840 credit score. Dave Ramsey said, don't ever use credit. Like all these different, it's right. just this like mishmash. So can you just ex like, and Give us the 101 and 201 and 301, whatever you want to give us on how it all works, what it is right. that you do, decisions that people should make, you know, all of that stuff. I, I just want to dig into it. So, yeah. So first off, I want to preference by saying, you know, I'm not a lawyer. Um, so always seek legal counsel. If you're in a position where, you know, you're either getting served or, you know, you're going to be in a consumer lawsuit with regards to some type of credit card debt or repossession, whatever it may be. Right. But I can only educate you guys on what I would personally do and what I have done in the past and, you know, what works for my clients. Um, credit is exactly what you're saying. It's an algorithm, right? It's not, it's just like building a transmission. There's simple steps to it. Um, but just building one transmission isn't going to be able to make you a pro at it. Right. So a lot of right. times there's people in the credit space that fix their own credit, fix someone in their family's credit. And they're like, sign me up, billion dollar company. I'm here for it. And truthfully, gives the credit space kind of a bad name because there's not just one way to be able to, you know, fix a certain profile. So I wanted to get eyes on your profile and say like, hey, this is what I would do. Mm -hmm. um, only, you know, educating from my point of view. And so the main things of credit, the two main things that you have to worry about is 35% of your profile is payment history, right? So if in the last three years, if it's a 30 or 60 day late payment, if you have any of those and it won't be a positive account, okay? Taking it a step further, 90 to 120 days is a key derogatory, which is going to affect your credit as much as like a repossession would or like a closed account for seven to 10 years. So those are big no-nos and all wow, the payments yeah. are going to affect them anywhere between 80 to 100 points, right? So late payments are the plague. Try to stay away from them, even just making the minimum payment, getting on the phone with your lender. Um, having some type of open communication is going to be able to put you in a better position than just silence, right? They can only, you know, assume the worst. We all assume the worst once we, you know, think of the situation. Um, right. So just get on the phone. A lot of times it's not that bad as well. And they're able to work with you. They're humans on the other side of the line. Uh, but number two, 30% of your profile. So 35% is your payment history. 30% is your utilization for revolving lines of credit, which is any type of credit card, you're going to want to go ahead and keep that under 30% utilization. That's 65% of your profile right there. As long as you keep those two in check, um, there's no, re there's at that point, it's just age and time mm -hmm. and you'll be able to have a perfect profile. So a 700 score or a 750, I apologize, is five years medium. So the oldest to the newest account, the medium range of it, uh, perfect payment history, 
and then under 30% utilization, two to three revolving lines of credit, one to two installment loans, which is a mortgage or any type of, you know, it's any type of loan that has a start date and a finish date, right? And you have a, you know, a set schedule that you have to be able to pay. So uh, a vehicle, a mortgage, um, some type of hard loan, things of that okay. nature. So yep. like, is it, is it more, so obviously a lot of, a lot of guys that travel a lot, like me, right? You may right. have, you may have a bunch of cards, right? And even right. if you pay them off, so you're saying you want to limit those number of cards or does that so, affect I mean, there's, it? There's guys that, yeah, I, I definitely, I mean, uh, King credit, he's like one of the guys that I've been mentored by and stuff. He would probably suplex me if you heard me say that you want to limit the amount of cards that you have. <laughs> so, but being able to say, okay, well, I'm traveling. This is the card that I'm going to use for travel, right? Or, you know, this is the card I'm going to use for marketing. American Express Gold, it's a great card to be able to get the gold um, for marketing and then being able to transfer those points elsewhere to be, you know, fly out with Delta or, yep. you know, go to Dubai, whatever it may be, so you can get a one to one point ratio. And all these things, you guys, like, these are, there's a million ways to fix credit. There's a million ways to use credit points. You can always message me, you can always DM me, um, which I'm sure there'll be like some type of uh, link or something like that. And yep, I give I'll free consultations. Yep. Yeah, I'll give yep. free consultations. And we're always here just to be able to, you know, kind of explain it because you're absolutely right. Credit is one of those things where you only know what you know. I remember telling my mom and dad, like, hey, I'm fixing credit. Well, I'm having a heart attack. Like, oh man, my boy's <laughs> a scammer. He's going to end up in orange. And I had to like reassure her that the only orange I'm ever going to be in is Hermes. And, yeah. you know, I'm too pretty to go to jail, mom. It's not, it's not on, on the cards for us. So. Yeah, I've said truth. that before. I'm I'm too pretty for jail, and my wife is a boxer, and I always tell her I'm too pretty to box too. So because I, 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 I have a funny shaped nose as it is, I don't need to get hit in the face. Although I will say she Same has way. hit me in the face on more than occasion. Um, why did you go on into accident. credit? Well, we're well holding mitts, and if you get <laughs> hit when you're holding mitts, uh, first of all, it hurts because she's got a terror. Like she has a terror of a right cross. Um, but it's your fault because you screwed something up. If you get hit when you're hitting, when you're doing holding mitts, but anyway, side, side note about boxing. Um, <laughs> what made you want to do credit? Like I, like again, knowing that the, are you trying to bring, like, did you have a motivation to bring like a level of integrity to the, to the industry? Or are you, what, what I, drove I saw that? a, uh, so working in the real estate space, um, I didn't want to, I wanted to be different, right? I didn't want to jump from selling real estate education to getting into the real estate side of things, there was someone that was doing credit. Um, and I went, it was like brokering, right? Brokering deals. Mm -hmm. And it just made sense for me. I, I saw the problem that I was solving. So Casey Thompson, he was at an event in Arizona, or in LA, Los Angeles, um, four years ago, four and a half years ago, five years ago. And I asked him, I was able to catch him outside. And I asked him like, hey, you went from building, you know, an LSAT course back in the nineties selling that for millions and then taking that money and building an online gambling like casino. And then from online gambling, you did sports betting and from sports betting, you did, you know, a, a bank for medical marijuana. Right. And I asked him like, those are the most random things in the world. So <laughs> right. how did you, how did you find your why? Right. You said to be able to be an industry leader, you have to solve a problem that a bunch of people are having. Right. Mm. And going into COVID, I knew that just hearing, I mean, personally, like how many people uh, could have benefited from having a low interest rate card and for that could have covered them for six months, right? Arizona, we were, you know, shut down for like two weeks, two weeks to a month, if that, and our governor was out there at dinner without a mask and stuff. So Arizona wasn't taking it serious like the other, you know, parts of the country, but I was speaking to East Coast people and you know, they were really going through it during COVID. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so I saw, I saw that problem that was, okay, well, there's never going to be a time where someone could tell me how much my time is worth. I'm always going to be able to say that I will spend no more than $4 for good coconut water, right? $5 yeah. for good coconut water, $1,000 for a phone, $200 for AirPods. But my, the better that I get with this time and my skill set, um, and just being able to consult with people, I'm going to be able to raise my prices, right? Because it doesn't matter. It's a 15 minute conversation. It's the 10 years that I've been able to build and the thousands right. of clients that I know that I've been able to help. 
And so I knew that I wasn't going to have a product or um, I wasn't going to get into clothing. I wasn't going to get into, you know, coconut water. I wanted to have a service. I wanted to have something that was going to be a, a consult, like a cons- consultation based business that I was going to be able to help people. Um, there's been time and time again where, you know, clients will come to us, single mothers will come to us and I hear like my mom's voice in them. And, you know, their job, their whole goal is just to be able to get a couple of cards and then get their like, kids into a, a condo or a townhome. Right. And then they've heard because nobody comes and says, Kai, I want to spend a thousand dollars and just work with you for credit repair. Right. It doesn't <laughs> happen. Everyone right. wakes up and they just want to spend a thousand dollars on a new bell or a new bag. But you heard no if you're coming to me. No, you can't get that house. No, you can't get that car. No, you can't get that business funding. And so for us to be able to genuinely say, yes, I can help you, right? And have a solution for them. We're not selling them snake oil. We say, hey, within this time, you know, because I feel conversations are beat by expectations from the front, right? Mm -hmm. So I feel like I paid for a service that I didn't get. I feel like you guys, you know, didn't communicate as much as you said you were going to. From the jump, we tell our clients it's a, you know, realistically a four to six month process, but we're trying to get the job done in 90 to 120 days. We have a money back guarantee that if nothing changes in 90 days, we'll give you a full refund. And if we go up to six months, which is the longest my program will go, and we don't see at least 60% of these accounts deleted, we'll give you a 50% refund, right? So all, all these things were, like I said, what I saw from other companies that I liked, what I didn't like, and I was able to create on my own. Um, but I knew that respectfully, if I had a service that was that people were paying for and they paid for it and they got what they you know paid for there's Mm -hmm. no reason that we're not going to be in business today and in 15 years right and that first client is going to send three more and those three are going to send us nine and that's how the referral system is you know going to be able to be built we're going to also go ahead and run great marketing right so these are the little things that i saw that worked with other businesses and i was able to kind of go into this space um but at the end of the day Credit repair today is not going to be the credit repair that's going to be in 12 months, right? The dispute methods that I used back in 2020 are not the same dispute methods that we're using, you know, today most of the time because there's a thousand ways to be able to skin a deer. And so, you know, we want to be able to make sure that we're staying innovative and that we're being effective and because time is of the money, right? That's all, that's all. Time is everything. Yeah. I could give you your money back, but if I wasted four months of your life when you were supposed to get into a house in May, you know can't get that time back and you have to go rent for another year and that's on me right because you paid for a service and so we want to be able to make sure that if they're coming into our program and we set those expectations that i feel conversations aren't coming later on uh with some validity right because everyone's gonna have a bad day everyone's gonna feel like i didn't talk to you enough but as long as you're able to be able to educate these clients and tell them what you were able to do um there's no reason that a conversation won't change that i feel conversation yeah yeah. What do you yep. see? How do you see those things changing now? I just saw, I saw a couple of weeks ago, you know, obviously the politics of the whole thing, but it's like, we want to limit, um, you know, kind of fiduciary, not fiduciary, but they want to limit the amount of interest that a company can charge you. And I mean, some of these rates are 25, 26. It's predatory. Yeah, you know, it really is. Um, predatory lending. So how do you see that this, how do you see the whole cre- and Obviously, I don't know what the latest number is, but people are carrying a ton of credit card debt, you know, obviously. Um, And so, like, how do you see that changing over the next few years? It's like a a quick statistic that I kind of tell people. It's pre-Great Depression numbers for bankruptcies and subprime auto loans being delinquent, right? So 30, 60, 90-day late payments, repos. Um, it's, It's not the best right now. America was built off of debt. Right. Yeah. When you when you take out an account, let's just say with Verizon Wireless, when you're getting a new phone, that phone is worth twelve hundred dollars, okay, or fifteen hundred bucks. They'll take out an insurance policy for fifteen hundred dollars, two thousand dollars, and then once you charge it off, they'll get their money back from the insurance policy. Okay. They'll write it off to Uncle Sam, so they got their money back twice at that point. That's why they love charging <laughs> stuff off. Right. Then you go and you you can't ever open up a new account with them. Um, very few companies like American Express will do like a, a rehabilitation program. Sometimes Chase will, sometimes Navy Fed. Those are the big guys. But Citibank, Discover, um, the subprime guys that are, you know, the ones that are doing the 15, 20%, 23% uh, 
um, interest rates, those guys, they're charging it off and you're never going back to them. Right. Mm. And so I can't tell my clients, Hey, don't pay them back, but they already got their money back twice at that point. You're kind of just like getting a lighter and lighting money on, like uh, lighting money on fire in front of your face yeah. and just saying, I hope it worked, you know, yep. and you feel good because you paid that debt back, but you're aging the debt for seven to 10 years from the day you pay it back. And people mm-hmm. don't understand this. And so, uh, you know, it's our job to be able to educate people because, you know, that's where I really saw there a lack of, I never had a credit class in high school. In college, I didn't really finish college, as we know. So I don't know if it was a credit course, but <laughs> most of the people, we have enough clients that I could, you know, uh, confidently say there probably isn't a credit course because a lot of people would be in a, a different position. Uh, yeah, there's there's free water bottles, free T-shirts, and then they yeah. don't tell you that if you – here's this – you know, $3,500 credit limit card, they don't tell you you have to pay that back. Like there, you know, you would think that most people would put two and two together, but these are 18, 19 year old kids that have never been taught anything. Their parents haven't really taught them about it. It's and, a lot uh, easier yeah. to, to get a hundred thousand dollars or $200,000 in student loans than it is to get $25,000 for a good business idea. Right? I know. And so it's so crazy. Firsthand, I know this firsthand, you know, so <laughs> it's uh, it's just the truth. Um, yeah. But at the end of the day, there's a need for it. And the only you only know what you know. And so yeah. being able to make this, um, you know, relatively simple ed- like information to educate the masses is, is kind of our mission. Um, and slowly but surely, I feel like we're getting the job done. It's not going to happen overnight, but Rome wasn't built in a day. So I'm OK. That's with right. It. Well, and it's what's cool is that our friend Justin, who's been on the podcast a couple of times, has a great new book, um, Power of Ownership, by the way, uh, go check that out. But um, he talks about there. Oh, it's right there on the screen. (laughs) Um, But if you he talks about changing the health of the world, right, by by through that education. And and it's interesting to think that you can actually have a, a big impact in the world through credit repair, which again is like, when you think that you think what your mom would think, right? Like this is scammy and, and which yeah, like, oh, man, with, what's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. What, what's the deal? And so I think that's, that's super cool um, that you're doing that. What kind of finance? So, um, you know, one of the things that came out of redeemed for me, and honestly, you were a big part of this and meeting you and having conversations with, with, with maxed out man, we have really, focused on guys that are more in my age group, more in my state of, you know, the, the time of life. And honestly, God really laid it on my heart that like, I have a voice experience and expertise to speak into younger men's lives. Absolutely. Um, and, and so I'm super excited for that. And I'm very thankful to have, have connected with you um, to kind of allow God to drive that home in my heart you know, kind of a thing, but no, you all definitely that spoke s- you, you've made an impact on me. I, I really appreciate you. I want to make that a public, a public announcement oh. that you really have uh, just made a huge impact on and on where we're going truthfully, just with marriage and you know, how I'm going to steward my family. So I appreciate you. I really do. I, I love that. And I'm excited to see that grow as well. I want, so the reason I set that up is because we we have different stages of life that we need to make different financial decisions, right? So based on what you've seen, can you just give me a couple of pieces of advice for like, all right, so these are the, you know, when you're early 20s, when you're right. 35 and have a family, when you're looking at retirement. So if we just kind of do those three, right? And obviously we're not we're not financial planners. We're not giving, right. you know, financial advice. We'll do that disclaimer here and I'll put it on the podcast thing so we don't get sued. Um, Thanks. <laughs> but like, what kind of things should, should people be looking for in terms of their decision making? You know, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm in my early fifties. I made some stupid business decisions, some stupid debt decisions, you know, in, in my twenties and thirties and forties even um, that, that I've worked through and I'm still working through. But like, give us some of those little tips that we can use. Yeah. I mean, so earlier stages, um, I think it's really smart to, if you have no credit, sometimes having no credit is worse than having, you know, bad credit. Um, mm-hmm. So really kind of just taking a, a step back and saying, okay, what's the goal, right? Because you shouldn't ever get a credit card with the intention to be able to go run up a check or buy anything that, you know, you really didn't have any plans to or the money to and uh, mm-hmm. to begin with, right? But I think being able to get money back or be able to spend money and then get points. It's very important in life, right? Mm -hmm. Setting yourself up correctly, whether that be with a 
with no credit and adding a line or asking, you know, a family member, hey, do you have a low interest rate card or a high limit card that you're not utilizing a lot that you could throw me on for 60 to 90 days, right? As an authorized user to be able to give them some history. Mm -hmm. um, I would do that 17, 18 years old. People talk about doing it, you know, with their kids when they're very young. That's awesome. Um, I don't really, since I started 18, right? So seasoned account, you're still going to be able to be, you know, way higher and way more um, well off than a kid that has no credit. Right. So buying either an authorized user, uh, which you can go through, you know, multiple companies, um, reach out to me because I will tell you who to go through. You won't get them through me, but I will tell you what companies to go through. I haven't signed a deal with them yet, so I want to go ahead and not publicly tell them, <laughs> yeah. say, say their name. But great we'll guys. Update, we'll update the notes yeah. one, we'll, yeah. what, once those deals are done, right? <laughs> and then uh, focusing on like, because that's a revolving line of credit, getting a, a car, right? Or, you know, a moped, something that's an installment line. Um, that's, you know, very big. Being able to build credit from a young age, being able to add as much history as you can. So that when you're five years in, you have a couple of accounts that are two to three years old. There's no reason you won't be above a 700 at that point if you're able to not overutilize your credit, right? Um, but a lot of times as a young kid, that credit card is an emergency, right? You mm -hmm. don't have, you're not in a position to be able to, you know, have two to three grand sitting around. Um, so being able to have a $3,000, $4,000 card is very important. And as time goes on, you know, the older you are, the higher limit of cards you should have to be able to, you know, just for those rainy day emergency funds. Um, you know, I can't tell you what investments to make or anything like that, because like you said, we're not financial advisors, but look at your plan and the lifestyle that you want to be able to have. If you want to be traveling a lot and be away from, you know, your hometown, your home state, I wouldn't say that you should have a bunch of real estate or Airbnbs that you're going to have to maintain unless you mm -hmm. have someone that is you know, maintaining them or property managers or anything like that, right? Um, if you don't know stocks, I wouldn't invest in stocks. I'm not one of those guys that is trying to learn a new skill. I know what I'm good at, which is building teams, building businesses, building companies. And so my investment portfolio is reinvesting into my company to where one day, you know, we're going to be able to sell for X amount, God willing, and I'll be able to pay people to, you know, uh, have a family yeah. office and that's going to be my right. investment, but yeah. for credit, right. For being able to make sure that you are setting yourself up, um, for the worst case scenario, you know, as Christians, we talk about it a lot when you're walking with Christ, it's always, people are like, Oh, hope for the, you know, prepare for the worst, hope for the best. But, uh, when you're walking in faith, it's always being able to walk and just know that it's always going to work out. But God gave you these tools and these, you know, um, tricks and tips and made you listen to this podcast from a random guy for a reason so you can go out there and have these tools so go out there right. get a couple of cards um and then i want to kind of just preference it with bankruptcies right so if you've went through bankruptcies if you've had a bankruptcy i and it's been dismissed or discharged uh, you can get it removed off your credit profile before the seven to ten year mark right so you know, I don't want people to look at bankruptcies as an end all be all. Um, you know, I, I can't even imagine the rates of, you know, suicide after, you know, bankruptcies and going through that. And just because the angst and anxiety that I hear from people that are just getting called by debt collectors, right, which is predatory as well. Um, you only know what you know. And mm -hmm. so if you have gone through a bankruptcy, you, you've had, you know, any type of stress like that, just know that there's companies out there, even if you don't work with us other credit repair companies that uh, have been in the game for a while could, you know, help you get out of that position um, a lot faster than seven to 10 years and, you know, get you back on your feet. So it's a, it's a good, it's a good thing to know. I love it. I love it. And if you're a little bit like, if you're kind of older um, and you're, you're still dealing with this, it's just a matter of kind of getting to the right right person like yourself yeah. and using your company and saying, okay, this is a situation I'm in. Or if you're an entrepreneur and you're, been having a hard time getting a, a line of credit, you know, business line of credit or whatever, there may be some, some help that you can give also along that way. Right. Yeah. So after the Silicon Valley bank crash, um, you know, during like COVID, we'll just say during that time, you could add an authorized user and Joe Schmo can go out there and get $30,000. Right. But after that crash funding in itself 
really dried up. Mm-hmm. Um, investment companies aren't, you know, too keen on, um, like the next Google, Facebook, Meta, whatever it may be. They're trying to be safe um, and position themselves. So you should as well, in a way, and go out there, get a few cards. I wouldn't go looking for installment loans unless you have, you know, A1 credit or anything like that. And we could definitely have conversations in the future um, if you ever have any questions with regards to, because every credit profile is different. Just as every Mm -hmm. person's different, you know, what works for me will not work for you. And that's just, you know, genuinely the truth. Um, But being able to put yourself in a position of even just knowing. So if you're, if you have less than perfect credit and you're trying to figure out, okay, is this a credit repair company or a debt consolidation company, which is lighting money on fire, debt consolidation, (laughs) credit repair is um, just kind of like a rehab center to be able to Mm -hmm. get you back, back on your feet for that bad knee. Um, I would just ask them, you know, specifically like, what's their goal? What's the plan? Uh, any money back guarantees, anything like that um, is a pretty good indicator. And, you know, if it's a debt consolidation company, most of the time they're going to tell you it's a 12 to 24 month plan. And that, you know, at the end of it, um, I mean, anything under God's green earth to be able to get you to be a client because respectfully, these guys are, you know, getting paid 15 to $20 plus commission of whatever you're, you know, bringing in. Um, but yeah, I mean, there, there's going to be a little bit different of a conversation. One's right. going to be telling you, this is not what you want to hear, but the truth. And then the other is going to say like, hey, this is too good to be true in a way. I can be able to yeah. pay this at 30 cents, 40 cents on the dollar. Um, they're not giving you a loan or anything like that, which a lot of times they position their company to be doing. So yeah, interesting. Okay. Yeah, that's good to know. Dude, I think that's a great place to uh, land the plane, as uh, as Micro always says. But um, tell us how we find you, uh, where we go to contact you, and um, yeah, let's get that going. Yeah, so on Instagram, uh, Killa Kai Clancy, and then Flawless Credit. So you can go and book an appointment for free. Either myself or one of my trusted associates will be able to give you a free consultation. Uh, but if you're coming from the pod. I would like for you to shoot me a DM on Instagram so I could personally hop on the phone with you and we can get you, you know, get you going either with credit repair or get you some loans, whatever it may be. Um, but just give you some good education on where to go. Awesome. Kai, I appreciate you, man. I think this really is appreciate awesome you. and I'm excited to see what's next. I know you got some deals brewing right now and, and um, yeah, I'm just excited to coordinate and collaborate as well. So have an awesome day, man. We'll talk soon. We'll see you soon. All right. If you're looking to really maximize your life and become the man you were made to be, head over to maxedoutman.com and get your journey started today.